What's up everyone? Hope you're all are having a great day today. So I've been playing a lot of Black Ops 4 lately. Like tons of Black Ops 4, just so I can get a really good feel for this game again. Even though I already did my final impressions video and you guys already know how I feel about this game. I feel like it just gets so much more hate than it really deserves. Sometimes when you're a Call of Duty player, you get blinded by a lot of things that are going on. It's not like how it used to be with the older Call of Duty titles, like Call of Duty World at War or Call of Duty 4 where you would simply buy the game and you would make your deciding factor there, if it's a good game or if it's a bad game. But nowadays, so many things change from the start of the game to the end, between weapon buffs and weapon nerfs, shops being added into the game, and different microtransaction practices being, you know, put out towards the title. A lot of things can kind of blur out your vision of what the game is actually about. What the actual developers, the dev team who put together these games, what they intended for you guys to enjoy out of their game. And a lot of times we forget that, including myself. We forget that these games are made with tons of love. And these developers who are making these titles love the game that they're playing and making. And you could tell that Activision had a very tight grasp on both Treyarch and Infinity Ward when they were talking about the microtransactions. Because even the Treyarch Studios, who, which their Black Ops 4 game obviously won't be affected by the recent news that we got about the microtransactions in Modern Warfare. But even Treyarch, they put out a public statement saying that's amazing that Activision finally dropped the loot crates. So it's not the development team, it is Activision who is putting in these very weird, I guess, just these microtransaction systems that are messing with the audience. But let's strip microtransactions out of Black Ops 4. Let's say this game was just the base game with no microtransactions, all the DLC weapons that were put into the game, like the Stingray, Peacekeeper, let's say all of them could be earned by just simply playing the game. Would you still consider this game a bad title? Would you still consider this one of the worst Call of Duty games you have ever played? Now there is still tons of cheese, don't get me wrong, between the specialists and even the weapons. Even if they did decide to give you the Stingray to all the players, that would be so obnoxious. Because then you would just have lobbies full of people running around with Stingrays with the explosive mod on. It will be 6v6 matches of just pure Stingray sauce. I'm not really that big of a fan of that. And all the specialist abilities that were in this game were just, oh my god. That, I think that's probably one of the biggest things that really pissed me off with this game was not really the microtransactions, but how many times I died off a street because some random person going 1 in 16 just so happened to get a grenade launcher or just so happened to get the scythe minigun and they just randomly you know, shoot a grenade across the map and it just so happens to hit me. Specialists have always been a very tricky thing in Call of Duty. Now, I I would say that specialists are a cool addition and that they should probably stay in future titles, but they need to take the aggressive factor away from them. We need only support abilities, like maybe a specialist that helps with your health, maybe a specialist that helps like recon, a specialist that gives you more, you know, details on the map, maybe spots enemies with a drone, things like that, you know, specialists that give you ammunition, but then they come out with specialists like Battery, who have the grenade launcher, and, you know, Reaver, who has the scythe, and Prophet, who has the Tempest gun, and they don't just get that. It's not like Black Ops 3, where you have just one specialist ability. No, in Black Ops 4 you get two no matter what, you didn't get to pick and choose like in Black Ops 3, you literally get two abilities per specialist. You can definitely tell that Treyarch was intending for this game to be played by a lot of the more scrubby majority of the community, a lot of the players, which we would probably call, you know, the Timmy No Thumbs, people who just can't get the grasp of Call of Duty games. I feel like this game has definitely tended to the majority like that. And the last thing that absolutely annoyed me with Call of Duty Black Ops 4 was obviously the health. Now, it did lead for a lot of fun gunfights, I will say that. Even though a lot of bunching up happened and people were always packing up into groups of two so they had their 150 health stacked on one top of, on top of each other, you guys know how Black Ops 4 played and how the community eventually took advantage of the 150 health. But what 150 health did is it allowed you to play more aggressive, and on top of that, they allowed you to self-heal, which was probably one of my favorite additions to any Call of Duty game. Because as you guys know, I'm a very aggressive player. I love to run and gun, I love to be as aggressive as I possibly can. So being able to self-heal allows you to pick your fights a lot easier than having to back off and being forced to, you know, go away from a fight because you can't heal. But self-healing 
definitely was a game changer for Call of Duty Black Ops 4. But 150 health, it allowed you to stay alive longer, allowed you to engage with more gunfights, and it definitely gave you a confident boost when starting to engage in a gunfight. The problem was the map design. The map design plus 150 health just did not work. Now, if we saw Call of Duty Modern Warfare type uh, maps, and then we saw 150 health, that would work because it's more distance in the map, teammates wouldn't be all bunched up together. But in Black Ops 4, the maps are so tight, and they're so, you know, they're stuck into their three-laned cheese, where players are forced to pretty much group up into teammates. You didn't have much variety to separate from your squad mates. So that pretty much automatically led, whether you noticed you were bunching with teammates or you didn't notice that you were bunching with teammates. It came down to the point where you would be grouping up with people, and then obviously the 150 health stacks, and then with Crash boosting you up to 200 HP, it just turns into a complete utter mess at times. Sometimes it just doesn't even feel like they tested it out on the maps, I'm not gonna lie. A lot of the scenarios just feel like it's just a bunch of cheese bullcrap that you can't even control. You don't have an option to control the scenario. You know, you can't do anything in specific to come out of that specific situation alive. You're just guaranteed a death there. So yes, all those things were very annoying with Call of Duty Black Ops 4. But one thing that I absolutely loved with Call of Duty Black Ops 4, which Treyarch has nailed with every other Call of Duty game, was the pacing of the game. This was a true arcade shooter, and I honestly didn't know that they were gonna be able to get the speed like this. I mean, this is faster than Jetpack Call of Duty. I would actually say Black Ops 4 is faster paced than Black Ops 3. You see a lot more gunfights in Black Ops 4 than you would ever see in Black Ops 3. Maybe not as fast as Infinite Warfare, but the fact of the matter is that this is a boots on the ground game that is a lot faster than you know our traditional Jetpack Call of Duty titles. It definitely spiced things up, and I think a lot of the Call of Duty community respect this pacing of the game because it just it gave you non-stop action. It gave you something to look forward to with every single engagement. You knew it was going to be more people around the corner, and it led to those high kill games. Now, Call of Duty always struggled with allowing you to have high kill games. In TDM, you would see like a 30 kill game, and that's extremely good if you get 30 kills in that lobby. But Jetpack Call of Duty games 110% revolutionized how players are playing Call of Duty. When Jetpack Call of Duty games came out, a TDM game, you started to see people topping off with 60, 70, even 80 kills in one game in a team deathmatch lobby. A lot of players, including myself, enjoyed this because, come on now guys, you know who I am. I'm a pub stomper. My favorite part about Call of Duty is just donating maximum amount of sauce, just getting tons of frags and getting clips while doing so. But then obviously went back to World War II, which dumbed down the pacing of Call of Duty again. But then Black Ops 4 came out. And I was, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I was very surprised that they were able to keep the pacing of a Jetpack Call of Duty game in a boots on the ground title. They were actually able to pull it off. That along with the self healing were probably two of my favorite things that ever came out of Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Like I said, Black Ops 4 is just a love-hate relationship, but it's definitely not one of my favorite Call of Duty games. At the end of the day, between the specialist cheese, all the microtransaction weapons, overpowered cheese, and how much they cater to the more noobish audience of the Call of Duty community, instead of making it, you know, more about skill and trying to become better, they kind of just dumbed it down to make it more about, you know, just luck. And I don't really like Call of Duty games that are more based off of luck than skill. But if I have to love anything about this game, it's hands down the pacing of the title. The pacing of this game and self-healing were two of the best features that I've seen come out of Call of Duty Black Ops 4. I gotta say, I'm not gonna lie, but I'm honestly almost just as excited for Call of Duty Black Ops 5 than I am for Call of Duty Modern Warfare at the moment. Black Ops 4 was used as a testing ground, intentionally by Activision to test their mechanics. So Treyarch didn't get an actual grasp of what they wanted Call of Duty Black Ops 4 to turn out to be. Which is sad, because it, it could have plenty of a poten uh, potential if the devs were allowed more time, more resources, and less time having to worry about how they can scam their consumers compared to actually putting in stuff into the game that we would enjoy. So I think Black Ops 4 was a huge lesson learned for Treyarch, 
And I have a feeling that they're going to come back so dang hot when it comes to Call of Duty Black Ops 5. I think they're going to really nail it when it comes to that game. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, because they're saying that's going to be during the Cold War and the Vietnam War. So if this is the case, and they're able to maintain the same exact speed that we saw in Call of Duty Black Ops 4, minus the specialist, minus the 150 health, I just want the same pacing of this game with 100 HP, good hit detection, good movement. We have a really good game here. Because like I said, you can hate Call of Duty Black Ops 4 as much as you want. You can talk as much crap as you want about it. I've already done my fair share. You could probably look past into all of my videos that I made about Black Ops 4. And I can guarantee that over half of my videos that I made for this game were just me talking crap about it. I'm not going to lie to you guys. But one thing that the whole community can all come together on is the fact that the fast-paced, action-packed gameplay of Black Ops 4 was superb. It really added in an amazing playstyle, something that we have never seen before in history. Literally, we have never seen a Call of Duty game boots on the ground that was this fast pace ever. Not even Black Ops 2 was as fast as this game. So it's going to be very interesting seeing what Treyarch has in store for us when it comes to Black Ops 5. I'm very hyped up about it. I'm curious to see how they're going to manage specialists, how they're going to manage the health, how they're going to manage map design, how they're going to manage the flow. It's a lot of things that probably a lot of you guys, including myself, are worried about what they're going to do with this game. But at the end of the day, I think they know what they're doing. I think they're probably just going to take the same pacing that Black Ops 4 had and just readjust a lot of the cheesy things that they did in Black Ops 4. But that's all I want to talk about today, guys. I just kind of wanted to think back a little bit about Black Ops 4. Think of some of the good times, at least, instead of all the negative times, even though that is a very difficult task for me. But let me know down in the comment section on all of your favorite moments of this game. You know, when is it coming out? What's the day right now? Today I'm recording this on Saturday, so this is going to be up on Sunday. So, what? Like, four more days? Thursday? It's going to be Modern Warfare. Black Ops 4 is going to be a thing in the past. Are you going to return to this game? Are you going to play it still? Did you enjoy Black Ops 4? And if you did, what was your favorite part about this game? I'm not going to lie. Even though I talked so much crap about this game, I'm probably going to revisit it. A lot. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Because, like I said, Call of Duty Modern Warfare is fun and all, but 6v6 is complete do do this year for me i am not a big fan of the 6v6 i enjoy ground war a lot more and i also enjoy 10v10 so i'm probably going to just exclusively play those game modes for a lot of the modern warfare life cycle which means that I, i'm going to want to play 6v6 eventually because 6v6 is what call of duty is that's what it, the core of call of duty is all about so what i'm hoping for is that when everybody moves on and all the sweats are gone from call of duty black ops 4 and they all officially have planted themselves into call of duty modern warfare we will be able to go back and experience call of duty black ops 4 without all the annoying cheats going on in every single lobby i'm hoping fingers crossed that that's how it's going to be but who knows? But make sure you leave down in the comment section, like I said before, on your personal opinions about Black Ops 4. But if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you go ahead and leave a like. If you hated it, you can always dislike. Also, if you're new to the channel and you saw this through the YouTube search, you can always go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed what you saw. And also hit that bell notification button if you want to be notified on all of my recent uploads. Also, if you want to catch some behind-the-scenes clips that you're seeing on these videos right here, you can see some more clips on my Twitter account, at jbonaman. I also chat with you guys on there. And also, if you want to catch me live streaming some video games, trust me, I donate plenty of sauce on live streams. I'm over on Twitch, at JWNMA. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.